right, Paul from DLT here with Eric from Spiderco. Good to see you again. Nice Eric. to see you. And we're going to talk uh, new stuff from Spiderco. So let's hop right into it. Right on. Um, one of the first things I like to show off is the new Bodacious. Uh, this was on the cover of our last reveal. Um, when I show this, though, oftentimes I like to show it with the Shaman because a lot of people know the Shaman. It's been a more popular product for us. The Bodacious is the brother to the Shaman. Um, and you can see the similarity in the design. But what you're getting with the Shaman is you're getting no forefinger choil. So the guard goes all the way up and the edge comes all the way back. So you get more cutting. Okay. Uh, another big factor on the Bodacious is the thinner blade. Um, so it's thinner stock and the grind goes all the way up and you get a little bit more thinner at the bevel down here. Um, and then it's got uh, thinner scales. So the overall thickness of the Bodacious versus the Shaman, you might be able to see that as, you know, drastically different. Um, it's got the open construction. It does have the backspacer back here for better weight, something to have in the back of your palm. Okay. It has a uh, flat G10 um, that's smooth rather than our peel ply. For some people sliding in and out of the pocket, they have a little, a little bit more well. ease. Um, comes with a compression lock, screw together construction. Um, it's just a beast of a knife. The, the Shaman was built to be a hard use beast of a knife. Sure. And so we took that with the Bodacious, thinned it out, lengthened the edge, and. And it has that real strong bevel tip like we do in the Shaman. Um, but yeah, it's a, a strong, hard use knife. This I personally haven't handled yet. This is the first time handling it. And you can definitely tell the, the thinness overall. The, the Shaman is a, is a great knife, but if it's been a little bit too big to carry for you, this is definitely one that you want to look at to potentially replace that. Or get back into the rotation with the Spedico. The name Bodacious also came from a bull. Uh, if you, if a bull? A bull. There was a... There was a famous bull that uh, that was hard to ride, named the Bodacious. Okay. It's a twenty-year-old uh, 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 bull, but oh, more than twenty years. But a lot of people think surfing. It's not really surfing. Okay. The original name came from from that. Uh, the idea came from the bull. Okay. That's awesome. So, yeah. So that's the Bodacious. Um, another one that's getting quite a bit of attention right now is our Magna Cut Pair of Twos. Yep. Um, so we have two versions we're coming out with. Um, one has this yellow and black texture. Uh, one is all black. So the yellow and black textured versions come with satin blades, magna cut. Um, then the uh, all black uh, has all black blade, all black hardware, blacked out completely. Super sleek. Um, the uh, black version also has a peel ply on there. Okay. Um, so you can get a little bit more texture there. Um, we're going to be doing these in everything in the U.S. though. So I think the next ones that you're going to see are the Mannixes, um, and then we're going to follow that through the whole system. But we will be offering an all blacked out Magna Cut version with this bi-directional texturing, and then the yellow and black and a satin. Um, and yeah, getting more and more popular. Magna Cut for us has been a little bit of a slow go. We were the first to bring it to the market with the Mule Team, very happy to get it to the market. Um, but we found with the corrosion resistance, we wanted to classify it as a salt. And so it did delay some of our production sure. to make sure all those components and, and design were well for assault. Um, now for our salt series, which is highly corrosive resistant knives, um, the Magna Cut doesn't hold as well as H2 on corrosion resistance, okay. but it is among the top in the industry for corrosion sure. resistance. And that's why we marked it as assault. And I really like the texture on this one. I also like the looks, the black, it's just sleek, all blacked out with the, the texture on there, really gives uh, nice traction. Yeah, it's, it's definitely getting attention here at the show. It's going to be a nice EDC, nice hard use knife. It's a great reputation of a knife with a great steel. Sure. Putting it all together is a wonderful recipe. Absolutely. Ready to go on? Yeah. That's, Let's that's stick with Magna Cut for a little awesome. bit. Um, so you're going to be seeing a lot more lightweights coming out uh, from Spyderco. So here's three. Um, this is the Manix. Most people do know the Manix. Yep. It's a well reputable design. Comes with the ball bearing lock, the deep pocket not deep pocket, the wire clip, the bi-directional texturing, magna cut blade. Um, all the components though were built for that salt series okay. knife. Um, the same with the chief. So you're gonna get some more edge if you like that lightweight sure. chief. Now we have an salt version. Uh, and then that pair of three, three in the salt three, version. Which is my, my favorite out of, the, out of this trio. Yeah, yeah, with the compression, mm -hmm. it's hard to beat. Yeah. Um, we also went with yellow because yellow has that bright color and deep atmospheres. And then to take it further, because LC200N is also another steel we work with mm -hmm. that's in our salt series, we're going to be transitioning most of our LC200N to a green color. Okay. So if you're seeing these in the field, you can tell the difference right by the color. Uh, and green really works well in those deep atmospheres as well. So, um, you know, more lightweights coming out of the U.S. facility, more Magna Cut, more LC200Ns, 
and expanding our salt series. Sure. And personally, I like the green over the yellow. It's just a visual thing, but I think they it's, both it's, perform it's, great. It's, yeah. it's a nice addition. Yeah. All right, keep rolling. Yeah. Um, this one is a UK. This comes in Spy 27, which was a steel that we developed with Crucible. Um, kind of a, a cobalt based yeah. steel because um, we felt that cobalt makes everything better. <laughs> um, and if you know our Spy 27 knives, they come with a special blue. We call yeah. it cobalt yeah. blue. And we're making a cobalt blue G10 as well now. So okay. uh, we're going to do that across the board with everything in the US. There will be a blue cobalt version that comes along. Um, I thought to show the UK first. Um, so it's a non-locker. Uh, it does have a four finger choil, so it's safe to, to use. It won't accidentally close on you. Sure. Um, does have a little bit of mid stop too to add it for safety. Um, but the cobalt blue G, uh, G10, the deep pocket wire clip, the Spy 27. Uh, if you're looking for a slip joint, hard to beat. This, a lot of people uh, sleep on the UK pen knife, but it is very well executed. Not everybody has a half stop, like Eric said. It's got a nice half stop to it. Really well done knife that doesn't get a lot of attention. And the color, the execution of the G10, so proud of the composite manufacturer. It is a really nice color. It's a beautiful It's one blue. of the classiest uh, blues that I've seen in the G10. Uh, the next one I was going to cover was the lightweight native, little native. Um, this is a two and a half inch folder. If you've carried our G10 version, which um, comes in both a compression and a back lock yep. version, our mid back lock version, uh, we went with the mid back lock version for the lightweight. Um, when you get to knives this small, having side springs tends to push them apart. Okay. And so with the back lock, you're going to get a lot of strength, a lot of longevity. Um, one of the things you're going to notice with the little native though is it's really thin. If you compare it to the other native, it's weight, it's thin, it's ease of carry, really elevated. Okay. Uh, so it has that deep pocket wire clip, bi-directional texturing, mid back lock, uh, BD1N coming out of the US facility, two and a half inches long. It's um, ridiculously light. Ridiculously, it's, it's and, and for slacks, everyday carry, it's a, it's a wonderful carry piece. Probably small enough even for a fifth pocket on a pair of jeans just mm -hmm. as a backup knife or a box cutter or whatever you want to do with it. And if you uh, follow our line, there's a knife called the Dragonfly that we've been yep. making for Ever. about 30 <laughs> years. Um, and if you're a Dragonfly fan, this is certainly something you'll want to look into. Okay. It definitely gives you that, that size and feel and carry of something like a Dragonfly coming out of the U.S. facility. Sure. Awesome. Ready for the next yeah, one? I, so these, I am the most excited for the next I, one. I'm excited <laughs> for these two. Um, they're really knives that we're already making. So this is a black, uh, all blacked out pair of two. But what makes this one unique is the coating. So uh, we haven't launched the coating yet or quite revealed it. So I'm not telling you exactly what it is. Sure. But we brought the coating process in house. Which is awesome. Um, and awesome. yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Uh, so when you're looking for coating, you know, DLC is one of the most popular. Mm -hmm gives you great wear resistance, gives you good lubricity, uh, gives you deep dark colors. You can do it on a variety of steels. What I'm excited about this coating is, one is it opens up more steels. Sure. When you go to coat, coat blades, um, you don't want to temper them. And so a lot of steels can't be done because of the temperature of the coating machine, especially when you get into something like an FDE color. Okay. And so with the new coating process, we can have a lower temperature in the coating. It'll give us a greater variety of steels. It also gives us more color. Um, also, it's very durable like DLC. But the joy that I really have in this is the lubricity. Okay. Uh, when you're cutting with these, it gives you great lubricity. It wants, it wants to slide through what you're cutting. Um, so we're going to be bringing a higher performance coating to the market at a lower cost because it's all in-house. Uh, That's awesome. It's been something we've been working on for quite a while, um, and we're rounding the last corner now. Uh, I don't want to tell you exactly what we're going to call the coating, That's fine. Um, but it is coming down the pipe, so you're going to see uh, more coatings coming out of Spyderco with high lubricity. So out of the gate, would these be the first two colors that you would debut? Would be the black and your coating? We'd probably launch it in all black first. Okay. Um, but this is a really sick color. With matching hardware on the inside, it's just class. Yeah, so you're gonna see more coated hardware from us. Even when you're opening and closing it, you can feel the lubricity of the action because that ball bearing is riding on that, that coating. It just, yeah, it just drops. it just drops, it just slices. It's it's a wonderful thing. So very much getting into coatings I, these I'm days. I'm very excited about this. Um, and then the other one, we're gonna be doing this for all knives in the US as well, but I'm gonna show you this one First, uh, this is the my uh, canvas micarta crew wear blade. Crew wear. Um, so we call them, you know, our what crew wear? What do we call them? Crew carta. The crew carta. Yeah, them. the crew carta. Yeah. So we're gonna go across the board with our crew cartas. Um, you do have to re-engineer them 
because my uh, canvas micarta tends to flex. Okay. It's not nearly as, as stable as something like a G10. And so you're going to see that the full liner goes all the way through here. Okay. We had to work with our thicknesses, work with the engineering. Um, but right across the board, um, you're going to get some crew cartas and everything USA made. Uh, and the Military 2 is the next one to launch. Awesome. And if you know the military uh, or the Military 2, uh, great reputation, wonderfully built, tons of CQI. Uh, the new Military 2 has the compression lock. And when, when did you say that the military first debuted? I think 1996. So it's been around um, forever. And if you look at the original military, from the original one to over the 20 years, you'll see differences in locks and hardware. That knife went through probably more CQI than almost anything we have ever made. Uh, and then we're just taking that CQI to the next, next level. level constant quality yep. improvement sure um, and so yeah the the crew carta military two um gonna Super be a exciting. sweet piece yeah, for sure. uh, you can tell this one's just out of the box too see how light it is uh <laughs> hasn't, you, hasn't been handled yeah it hasn't been finger handled. oils and all that stuff yeah. kind of hasn't injured. been beautified yet yep. <laughs> so yeah yep. not that's the military too which is one of the nice things about my carta is it gets kind of worn in between your pocket and the finger oil just has a unique character to it which I think adds to the looks quite a bit. And the blade is still shiny too. <laughs> That's true. So that tends to get foggy as you use yeah. it too. So they, they tend to get more beautiful the yep. more you use them. Definitely recommend that. Um, and then the next one that I'm going to show is the Spy Mito. Uh, this is a flash batch. So uh, every once in a while, Spyderco will come out with what we call a flash batch, which is all new tooling for a new knife that we only make once. Yep. Um, so it's a one-time run. This is a collaboration with Lion Steel. Uh, they make a knife called the Mito. So we took their Mito and we spiderized okay. it. Uh, we put an hourglass clip on, we put a round hole. Um, this comes with canvas micarta. Okay. It comes with titanium reel with a stainless interface. It has the flipper with uh, ball bearings inside. So nice. you have great action. And the flipper is removable in case you just oh. want to unscrew that, take it off and, and use the as hole a manual. as nice. a manual. Um, but absolute beautiful quality, beautiful design. It's such a joy to work with Lion. They, they build beautiful knives. They, they make great knives. and. Uh, they have some of their flippers that have the removable tab, but I think that's an extra, a nice touch that you you had added on here uh, with their design. M398, by the way, too, nice. uh, which is a, a newer steel for some folks. So if you're if you've been into M390, um, which is which like have. yeah, <laughs> great steel. Um, you know, Bowler tried to bump it up a little bit, okay. added some more carbon, and and uh, we're rolling into some M398. Nice. So all this product is coming down the pipe fairly soon, nice. honestly. That's awesome. So we're definitely looking forward to this year's uh, releases and it was great to talk with you. So I appreciate it. Yeah, much. thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Well, we like are, and we, subscribe. We are still rolling, are we? <laughs> yeah. so that Definitely like and subscribe. <laughs>